Here are five custom actions that I've made that I hope will be useful to voiceover artists and audiobook artists. The five actions are, the first action is, is, is for setting up tracks. The second action is a modified record button. The third is uh, insert marker. The fourth is insert marker and rename the marker. And then the fifth custom action is a little bit more complicated. It splits the recorded audio at the markers, uh, normalizes it to a DB setting of your choice, and then creates a region from those items and asks you to name the region. So I'm gonna run through those now. Here's the first one. So it creates a track nested in a folder. So I imagine what you might want to do is call the folder chapter one, and then call the track take one, and then within our take one, we can have one A, one B, one C, and then we could create another track here, call it take two, and then we can have two A, two B, two C when we've created our tracks here. So that's the first custom action. Um, it creates a track, nests that track inside a folder, and asks you to name it, which is all fairly straightforward. The next custom action is a modified record button. Now, I'm gonna show you how that works here. What it does is it goes to the end of the project, it cancels out any time selections you've got, and it makes sure that the loop is off. Um, one of the things that personally I struggle with is I leave the loop on. So if I've been doing some editing and sometimes you, you wanna have the loop on for editing, uh, you then go back to recording and you forget that you've got the loop on and your recording suddenly loops back to the beginning or where you were just editing, which can be really, really annoying. So in order to make recording a little easier, I've made this modified record button, which will always turn off the loop and cancel out any time selections that you've got going on. Obviously that's not necessarily always what you want. So in that case, um, you might have to go in and play around with the custom action to remove some of the, the, the things that you don't want in there. So the third custom action and the fourth custom action are both for inserting markers. The first one does this, simply inserts a marker, not very special, not very complicated. And then the, the other insert marker does this, creates a marker and says, what do you want to call it? So I will call that good and then can put in some other regular markers. So the reason I'm putting a marker in is I'm imagining that I'm making a mistake. So I make a mistake, put in a marker. Instead of using a clicker where you have the visual clue uh, where your mistakes are, this is a different option for just putting a marker in as you're recording. And then if you make a particularly bad mistake or a you know, something sounds good, whatever, you can put the marker in and make a note there. So you can put good or bad or edit, etc. You get the idea. So now we've got a recording and some markers that we've added on the fly. We're gonna hit stop and there's our recorded audio with markers. So the next custom action is a little bit more involved. It's going to split the audio at the markers, normalize the audio, and then create a region from those items and name that region. So here we go. I'm gonna normalize it to minus three, and then I'm going to call this region 1A. Okay, so there we have our first chunk of audio that's been edited and normalized and put into a region. Now the next thing I want to show you is how the modified record button works from here on in. You can see that the region has also created a time selection because to create the time selection, the custom at the cycle action uh, sets a time selection from the items, then creates a region from the time selection. So when we press our modified record button, you'll see the time selection clears 
and even though here the play edit cursor is at the beginning of the project it's going to record from the end of the project like this okay so we've stopped recording we've done a little editing and now we're carrying on on the same track put in some markers like this finish our recording do the same thing normalize it call it 2a no sorry call it 1b okay so it's take one part b now if i pull take two down here i have take two highlighted if i press my modified record button again it selects the highlighted track and carries on recording from the end of the last item so we put in some markers normalize it call this 2a okay and then hit record and it's carrying on from the end of the project okay so you get the idea call that 2b now let's say for argument's sake that I want to take out this whole beginning section here if I delete it ripple editing has been turned on by uh, the editing shortcut so everything moves again if I move this white section here everything behind it moves with it okay so again you might not want ripple editing on but the idea is this gives you the option to say okay I know the beginning of the take two was awful I want to get rid of it there gone everything moves up behind it so let's say we're now happy with chapter one and we want to go into chapter two so we press our first shortcut again and we're going to call this chapter two take one and then again we can just create another track here called take two uh, it might just move take one up there so take one is highlighted it's in the folder called chapter two and when i hit my record button the time selection will clear and we'll carry on recording from the end of chapter one okay so just throw in a few markers hit stop hit my edit button normalize and call that take one a and we carry on add some markers call this edit one normalize call this one b and then go down to take two see i'm just i'm just selecting the track here with the uh left and right arrows so i've selected take two now press my record button there we go okay so i don't need to have markers in to have the edit function work again i can say right i want this section here gone Let's say i want this section here gone ripple editing is still working for me and then what i have to remember is i want take two here hit my record button and we carry on from the end of the project so that's the basic functionality of those five shortcuts now i'm just going to show you what they look like in the custom actions so the first one is a cycle action and it's uh, this one this is what it does insert new track at end of list save current track selection insert new track at end of track list go to previous track leaving other tracks selected make folder from selected tracks rename selected tracks and unselect parents of selected folder tracks okay so what that looks like is this
The next one is a custom action, and it's record from end of project. It is unarm all tracks for recording, go to end of project, set selected tracks, record armed, remove time selection and loop point selection, unset transport repeat state, and then record. Okay, so these are the things that you might want to not have in your in the custom action, which is remove time selection and loop point selection and unset transport repeat state because uh, you may have a, a reason that you want to keep your loop point selections and keep things in repeat state. Other than that, uh, the other the other three or four points uh, should still do that still give you the same results. The next one is simply insert marker at play cursor. That gives you the basic marker. The next one is, here, here we go, insert and or edit marker at current position. That's the other one. And then the last one is definitely a cycle action, which is here. And that is split items at project markers. Select all items on selected tracks in current time selection normalize selected takes to db value set time selection to items insert region from time selection and edit set to random colors disable snap and ripple editing all tracks on so you can just type these numbers into the cycle actions and they should give you the desired results okay that is everything um please subscribe and hit that little like button so i don't feel so alone in the universe i really appreciate you watching and i hope it's been useful especially to uh, all you voiceover artists and audiobook artists out there uh, keep up the good work thanks a lot